It's Christ in us who is the hope of glory. And, and I entitled this message, The One Inside, Inside of You Was Sent by God. And the God that is inside of you wants to help someone else. And so he wants to use you in order to do that. Isn't God good? So let me go in toward the message. Psalms 107 and verse 20. He sent forth his word and healed them. Now I'm still talking about healing, but I'll be talking about other things. But if we could ever help one another trust and believe God for his power to literally heal our, our, our diseased body, our afflicted body, our broken body, if we could trust God to do what is evident in the natural, it would help strengthen us to trust God for what he does in the, in the spiritual. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is a Savior. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. He rescued them from death and dying. This this thought keeps coming back, so I'll mention it. I love, I believe we should share testimony. And when God touches you on the inside or on the outside, I believe that testimony should be made. Did you know that I know many people who have had a physical miracle, a miracle of healing, of divine healing from brokenness, a physical brokenness or disease that I never heard them share their testimony to anyone else. Do you know what is worse than that? I know many people who were broken and diseased with sin and were forgiven and to this day still has not shared that miracle with others. God expects us to give testimony of what he's doing for us and even what he does through us. Amen. And I'm praying for a conviction in this church that we cannot help but share the testimonies of what God is doing for us physically, financially, spiritually, relationally, in every way. He says that we are made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And, and guys, I just want to say, if we're going to be a lot to the world, we have to share that light. We can't be secret agent man serving God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some of you old people like me, we remember that, that old show, Secret Agent Man, you know? I never watched the show, but I loved that part of the song, and that's all I ever, I guess that's all there was. Secret Agent Man, and and uh, the guy would go, I don't know if he had a pistol or what, but some kind of a James Bond sort of guy, I guess. But uh, God does not want you to be that secret agent. And you're undercover and nobody knows who you are or what you are about. He wants you to express and explain what he has done for you and that the light of Christ that shines in you can shine through you. And I am praying for a conviction in this house, in this church, through this ministry. I am praying for a conviction that we cannot stay silent anymore because everyone that knows Jesus Christ, that names the name of Christ, has received abundance and wonderful things and miracles from God and people need to know. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So the thought that won't keep coming back is, or won't stop coming back, it keeps coming back. I remember in this church, it was before, I think, before we added that wing on and this wing on, and we were a smaller auditorium, and a young man in the church, his family were leaders in the church, and he was in the church, this was years ago, and he was sitting right over here, and he had broken a bone in his foot. And so he's struggling, and, and I'm down here preaching, walking back and forth, and the Lord directed me, and I called him out. Josh, I said, Josh, come up here, and he limped up there, and, and I said, God is going to heal you. The, the Spirit of the Lord was up on me, and I said, God is going to heal you. So I put my arm around him. He was uh, a teenager, an older teenager, 
put my arm around him and we just kind of made a little trek, a short trek across here and back over and God healed him and his foot was healed from that moment on. Amen. That's the kind of healer we have. That's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. He's not dead. God is not dead. He's still alive. Now, I don't want to offend you. I only say things like this to challenge you, but I will say it this way. God may be dead in you, but God is not dead. And if you are not dead, if he's in you, you're supposed to let him live and thrive, be alive, and let your light shine for him. Amen. Amen. I always think that was intended for me. I'm not sure. (laughs) But it won't hurt you if you already drink out of it. You'll be all right. (laughs) So, he sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. And that's what he'll do for you. Let me ask you this question. Are you on the fringe of death? Are you about to die? Are you here, but, but those thoughts keep coming and you keep thinking, well, I'm about to die and it's about my time to die or I deserve to die and I'm at there. He rescued them from the grave. You can trust God every day. And I don't care how young you are or how old you are, you can trust God every day. David said, once I was young and now I am old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed, his children, begging for bread. Amen. If you're serving God and putting him first, you can trust him for every need, for deliverance, for, for anything that, that he wants to do in your life. I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit is ministering to you more than I'm actually saying. Because every one of you are individuals. And you go through times of brokenness, and that's for a purpose. You go through times when you need healing, and that's for a purpose. You go through times when you feel rejected, and that's for a purpose. It's to help get your attention back on God, putting your trust in God and honoring God and being faithful to Him under any condition. That way He can use you through every condition so that your light can shine into this world. Amen. Praise God. The one inside, the one on the inside was sent by God. In Matthew 8, verse 16 through 17. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him. Somebody said, well, thank God we don't have that anymore. Well, wake up, my friend, and you'll see it in government. You'll see it in education. You'll see it in science. You'll see it next door. You'll even see it in your church if you open your eyes. And you can see that demons are working on people and even working through people and destroying the lives of people. And when evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word. With a word. A man, he spoke with a word. And notice what else? He drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. It was to fulfill. That means to verify a prediction. When God, when the Bible speaks of him fulfilling a word, it literally means he's verifying a prediction. He knows the end from the beginning. He spoke it before, and he verified it by the fulfillment. He's still doing that today. He's still doing that today. You see, all the devil wants you to do is to begin doubting a few things that the word of God has spoken, that God has clarified or verified. If he can get you to doubt a few things, then he'll begin to get you to doubt other things and many things. He'll even begin, he'll even get you to 
begin to doubt your experience with him or your experience says. You know, one of the big things is when we get healed, because I've dealt with it physically, I'm healed and God works a miracle and now I'm healed and then uh, and everything is okay, but I begin to testify about it, then he tries to bring it back on. God's not bringing it on. I didn't bring it on. He brings it, tries to bring it back on, and we're feeling those symptoms, and we begin to doubt what God did for us. And if you doubt, you lose. If you doubt, you lose. Amen. God has come. To, he has called us to believe. We believe him. We trust him. There is no place in Scripture. There is no place in Scripture where he justifies doubt and unbelief. Someone says, well, I never saw that before. Well, I never saw a demon cast out before. Well, let's get real in the spirit world because the spirit realm is more real than your natural realm. One day what you have in the natural will go back to the dust of the ground and what you have in the natural will return to the dust of the ground, but your spirit and soul will continue to live and it is more real than what you have in the natural Amen. So he verified a prediction. He drove the spirits with the word. He drove them out and healed the sick. And there's other scriptures like this that speak of this. Many times, more often than you would like to think probably, things that affect us in the natural are because of the working of Satan. Some people like to believe in angels. In fact, I've heard it at funerals where someone dies and the preacher says, well, God just wanted another angel. Stupid, 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 stupid. Amen. Goofy, 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 goofy. Well, preacher, my favorite pastor said that about my my. My third cousin twice removed, you know. And uh, you, you don't turn into angels. I mean, it's just as simple as this. A man can't turn into a woman. Amen. And a woman cannot be turned into a man. Well, I'm going to let that rest a moment but I spoke the truth. I spoke the truth and it goes forth. Amen. You will never be turned into an angel. If the good people are turned into angels, that would mean the bad people are turned into demons. And that's not the way it is. Amen. You, you find a, a place until the resurrection or until the judgment. And I don't, there's a lot of thoughts out there and I don't have to go there. But you'll never be turned into an angel or a demon. You are you. You are as God created you. So you will remain. That's why it is so important that you pay, a, that you pay attention to what is spiritual so that you can find an eternal life in Christ because there are only two destinations for eternity. Amen? So I'll give you two guesses. But you know, even giving you two guesses in our world today, many people would get both of them wrong because they have no clue. They've never heard. But there are only two eternal destinations. One is heaven in the presence of Christ, in the presence of God. The other is hell, and Jesus described it as eternal torment where there is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Well, it got quiet. It got quiet in this building. Either you, you're afraid to say amen because you don't believe that, or you're afraid to say amen because you think your neighbor will think you believe that. I had no intention of going here, but I'm going to stay here a moment. What else do you not believe in that Jesus said? Amen. Do you, do you, do you not believe in the words where he said, Be you holy because I am holy? 
What else do you not believe that Jesus said? What else in the Scripture are you going to try to disqualify just because you don't like what he qualified? Amen? So there are only two destinations, two eternal destinations. That means there's, there's two places. You'll go to one or the other whenever this body goes back to the ground. Amen. I had no intention of going here, but, but I've got to say a little bit more. See, you're made up, <clears throat> you're made up of a spirit, soul, and a body. And your spirit and soul is eternal, but the body is not. The spirit wants to serve God. There's something inside of you, and you want to serve God. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it was said this way, that God has set eternity in the heart of every man. And there's something inside that you know there is an eternity. And there's more to life than this life. And this life is served as a, a kind of, we could describe it as a testing ground whether or not you're going to serve God and be faithful to God, whether or not you're going to love God and love one another. And so the spirit is, knows it's eternal. The soul is that place we call it a seat of the mind, the will, and the emotions. The soul, we could say, is kind of in between the spirit and the body, the flesh. And the soul is kind of the determining factor. Either it, it feeds that which is of the flesh with its thinking, its emotions, and so forth, or it feeds that which is of the spirit. And the spirit inside of you wants to serve God. We've seen it explained in, when I was young, explained, back then even cartoons had a little bit of sanctity in them, where it would show the, the demon, the little devil on this shoulder talking into this ear, and the, the little angel on this shoulder talking into this ear, and back arguing, and the mind is, so they would either do what was right or what was wrong. You know, normally in those cartoons, they always did what was wrong. And that's what your soul does. Your spirit wants to go to heaven. That's why there's something inside, and you want to do what is right. But yet the flesh doesn't care, and too many times it wants to do what is wrong, and you end up doing what your flesh desires. But I'll tell you something about that flesh. That stinking flesh. I'm not talking about it stinking when it burns in hell because it won't. It won't. I'm just talking about that stinking flesh. That little stinker. But it knows that whether you live good or bad, no matter what, it's going back to the ground, so it does not care about eternity. Remember, he said, within the heart of every man, God has put eternity. The heart is your soul, the seat of your mind, will, and emotions. And that's why you're torn to do right or to do wrong. And God wants you to do right. And the wrong you have done has brought forth many, many hurts and pains and will continue to do so if you continue. Goodness, I'm not going anywhere where I had intended, and it's okay. So we could ask two questions. If you just keep doing what's wrong, you just keep on and on and on and on and bringing pain into your life and those around you and goes on and on and on. And it's like you don't really give a care. That's because you're serving your flesh and not your spirit. You can't serve two kingdoms. You can't serve both. Some people try to live in two kingdoms. You can't serve but only one kingdom. And so you keep causing pain. You go on and on and on and on. 
and you feel sorry for yourself when you can't do what you want to do in the flesh. Should I name it? I would, but I don't want to. I'm not here to be condescending. I'm here, let the Spirit minister to you. Let the Spirit. I'm not here to be condescending. I'm just here to get your attention. So your, your little stinker, that little stinker, that flesh, is going to go to the grave. And if you've done what is right, God's giving you a new body in eternity. He said, this which is mortal will be done away with, and you'll receive that which is immortal. This, this which has no glory in itself will be done away with, and he'll give you that which is glorious. Amen. That's exciting to me. And you said, well, it's not worth the pain and suffering I have in serving God. What in the world are you talking about? What in the world? I don't mean to call you stupid, but that's crazy. Amen. That's crazy. Well, it's too hard to serve God. I can't do what I... And what you've been doing is destroying your life and the lives of those around you. Oh, baby, that makes a lot of sense. Amen. That makes a lot of sense. Because the things that you've done serving the flesh has brought tears and pain and heartache and sadness. It's even brought disease and it's filtered the good things out. Instead of live, living a loving life, you live a selfish life and it's all about you. Hey, is this good preaching or not? Yeah. Is this good preaching or what? <laughs> God is so good. God is so good. I'm not trying to be hard. I'm just trying to present truth. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you. Man, it's your destiny. Everybody talks about destiny. Well, I want to be rich. I want to be famous. That's pretty shallow when you compare it to what is eternal. Okay? 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 Sometimes we just think too shallow. This flesh is going back to the ground. And do you know what happens when it goes back to the ground? I'm not going to go there. Lunch shall be served before long. I'm not going there. But if you've ever wondered, just think about it a while and you can figure it out, you know. Well, the one on the inside of you was sent by God. He sent forth, forth his word and healed our disease. He drove out the spirits with the word. And these are the words that we use when we speak against disease. How many times have we spoken over someone who had cancer and called that cancer to be extracted from the body only to receive a report that it was extracted. How many times have we spoken over someone with a broken bone and in an instant that bone was healed? How many times does the scripture say things like with a word he spoke and it was done in? How many other times whenever he spoke it says and immediately, immediately, I know in the book of James it said the sick shall recover when we pray for them. And I believe in recovery and letting your body recover through faith. But the examples that we see in Jesus, it was always immediately. Immediately. It happened immediately. I like to trust God for the moment. Well, someday, someday he's going to bring revival. Someday I know he's going to heal me. What's wrong with today? What's wrong with naming today? Amen. Someday I know he's going to save my children. We'll call it forth today. Speak it for today. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Right here, right now, it's today. 
Today is the day for your deliverance. Today is the day for, for his glory to be manifested in you. I mean, do you believe this? Yes. Amen. We've seen it oh, a thousand times over and over and over. Praise God. I'm trying to figure out how to, what to do, how to close. Some of this, if I start, I can't stop. I'm thinking about the lady over in Nico and Caprice's church, and uh, uh, I was preaching over there, and she had had a stroke. And so they went and picked her up and helped get her in, and I don't remember which side. I think it was her, seemed like her left side, but that's irrelevant. You know, when you, she had a stroke, and one side of her body, she couldn't function. But they brought her to church, got her in the pew, and, and we designated that Tuesday night as a healing service. And as I would every, every time I would go to Romania, we would usually designate one night in their church as a healing service, and all the other churches they have would come together, or we would designate a healing service also in, a, in another church that we would go to. And people were always healed. But this lady had a stroke. She's sitting kind of back over there. And they have a pretty large church. And uh, it's always exciting seeing young people worshiping God, young people involved in ministry. And uh, so I'm preaching and speaking healing. And we were seeing people healed during the message and during the prayer and I think even during the worship. But it, it's God's service and people are being healed. And Anyway... Before service was over, she was standing, standing, lifting both hands in the air, worshiping God. God healed her. I don't know when it was he healed her, but he healed her in that service. And, and I remember at the end of service, they always gave lots of people rides home. They'd go pick them up, drop them off, get some more, and drop them off, and bringing people, everybody bringing somebody to church. And uh, Nico asked her if she wanted to ride home, and she said, no, I'm walking home. And she walked home healed that night. Amen. Amen. And this wasn't no young person. This was, this was, a, this was no whippersnapper. Amen. She's like me and some of us, you know, some of us whippersnappers have lost her snap, and, and I get, but she walked home anyway. She walked home anyway. He sent forth his word. The one on the inside was sent by God. The one on the inside of you, and he's, the one on the inside of you is greater than he that is in the world. That's why we can preach these kind of messages. The one who is in the world, whether it's demon or man, that wants to oppress you, suppress you, dominate you, control you, hurt you. The one on the inside of you, Jesus Christ, is greater than he who is on the outside, who is in the world. So I, I, want, to, I want to ask you as we trying to close how are you how are you how are you and I'm at personally how are you how are you doing we have a lot in this county who are hurting and maybe someone here who is hurting how are you doing how are you doing I know you're not going to answer me from your seat but but how are you doing really really how are you doing? How is it with you? How is it with your car? Is your car okay? You got good tires on it? Fresh oil? How's the battery? How is it with your car? How is it with your home? Are you able to, to pay your bills? Do you have food in the, in the pantry? Do you have a bed to sleep on and furniture to set on? And how is it in your home? 
Are you able to stay cool when it's hot or stay warm when it's so cold? How is it in your home? How are, how are you doing? How is it with your bank account? Have you, able, are, have you been able to start a little savings over here and watch it grow? Are you able to pay your bills on time and still have something left over? You may be living from week to week, but, but how is it in your bank account? Are you able to live week by week without elevating your credit cards? How, how is it with you? How are you doing? But the main, the main question I want to ask, and then we're going to let the Lord minister to us in song, and Christina will lead it. Answer this as truthfully, as honestly as you can, please. How is it with your soul? How is it with your soul? How is it on the inside of your being? How, how are you? How are you doing? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you doing okay? Are you... Or, or maybe you're, you're troubled and maybe you're distressed and, and maybe sometimes you feel lonely and, and maybe there's things you've done or others, something has happened and, and it's caused you to feel ostracized. Maybe you've, you've lost faith. Maybe you've lost hope. Maybe you never even had it. And you're, you're afraid of the future and, and you have no point of reference in your life to give you hope. But maybe you have had that point of reference, Jesus Christ being the point of reference. And maybe you have had that point of reference in your life, but somehow you lost that point of reference and you're wandering. The Bible calls in the book of Jude preachers who, who have wandered off, he calls them wandering stars. Maybe you're like a wandering star. How is it with your soul? Do you need to come back someplace where you were before? Do you need a, a renewing of your faith? Do you need a grace of God covering you, your heart, your mind, your, your being, your body, your person? How is it with your soul? Maybe something happened in your life that caused heartache, sorrow, distress, and you, you haven't gotten over it yet. I don't know. I don't know, but you know, how is it with your soul? Are you at peace? Are you in peace? Or, or do you feel tormented? I like that song that we sang before, I won't leave here like I came, sick and tormented. Uh, and I, I can't remember the words. I'm not good. I make my words up usually when I sing. If I'm singing out here and y'all are singing, I'm making my words up half the time. Years ago when I played the bass standing over there, and I, they didn't give me a microphone. They took it mine away. And I'd be singing over there just making my own words. Because I couldn't sing their words and stay in beat. So in order to stay in beat, I, I, made, I, I sang my own song. And sometimes it was too loud. I felt comfortable. I didn't have a microphone, so I felt comfortable singing out, but sometimes it messed them up. So after a few, a few times of being reprimanded, I stopped doing that. But how is it with your soul? How is it with your soul? God loves you so much. God loves you so much and he wants to fix everything and make everything all right. We're going to sing in a moment. It's possible someone would like to come up and, and be prayed for. If they do, I'd like for someone on our, on our prayer ministry team to step forward and pray. But right where you are, you can be made whole. Right where you are. No matter if you've you're suffering a sadness, a sorrow, or suffering a sickness, a pain, no matter what, 
it can be well with you. So I'd like to ask Christina to, to sing the song that she's chosen. You're welcome to stand and just let the Spirit of God minister to you. well with your soul you have a lot of reason to rejoice but if there is something struggling within you and maybe you don't know Jesus as your Savior maybe you've prayed these prayers before but you you sense you feel like you need to pray them again and renew your your commitment renew your faith renew your dedication I would like to lead you in in a prayer of accepting Jesus as your Savior and making him your Lord he is the only one he is the only way there's no other way he can make it well with your soul if you would pray this with me if you have if you're being troubled if you are troubled if it's not right if it's not well please pray this prayer and so we pray Heavenly Father I believe you you are my God and there's none in the heavens or the earth like you. You're the God of eternity. You're the creator of heaven and earth. And you are the lover of my soul. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, your only begotten son, whom you sent to this earth through a virgin named Mary. He came as a baby and became a man until he gave himself as a sacrifice for the cleansing of my sin. By the shedding of his blood, by the giving of his life, and by the stripes he bore on his back, 
He gave himself so I could be whole physically and spiritually and emotionally and in every other capacity. I accept this Jesus as my Savior and I make him my Lord. Jesus, you are my Lord. Father, I will serve you all the days of my life. Forgive me of my sin. Every one of them, I pray, cleanse me. Deliver me from my shame the things I've done that bring so much embarrassment and humiliation. Deliver me from my shame, all of it. I trust you, Father, and heal me from my pain. That which I impose upon myself or others imposed upon me. Deliver me from my pain, heal me, O oh Lord. You are my God, Jesus is my Savior. I make him my Lord. And I pray so, I say so, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you believe it, give him praise. If you prayed that prayer, give him praise. He is the lover of your soul. I love you. We love you. God bless you.